So what we're going to do is analyze the same problem that we had just completed with the cold air standard analysis. And I want to work it again, except without the assumption of constant specific heats. So I'm going to get rid of our temperature information that we had determined. And we are instead going to be looking for enthalpies. So temperature really only matters in as far as its ability to get us to an enthalpy. And since this is just asking for thermal efficiency, everything we're doing is just a means to an enthalpatic end. We want an enthalpy so that we can take the difference in enthalpies to determine our work in Q in, work out in, Q out terms. And we will only determine as much as is necessary to get us that far. Does that make sense? So I, I just want enthalpies and everything else is a stepping stone to get there. The stepping stone that will help us is going to be the reduced pressure. So I am going to remember that I have all of our pressures already, and those will only serve to relate our reduced pressure proportions here. Okay. And then our best friend in this analysis is going to be table A21 or table A22. Table A22 where we are going to be looking at the reduced pressure and enthalpy corresponding to our T1 and then motoring through that way. So we begin with T1, which was 290.15 Kelvin. The temperature at state one was 17 degrees Celsius converting to Kelvin allows us to look that up in tables. And I can see on my tables that 291.15 is going to occur between 290 and 295. So I am going to pop up the calculator. We're going to do a little bit of interpolation here for enthalpy and PR1. So I'm going to scooch that down just a little bit so that we can see it. Remember, my enthalpy is the second column. I can always tell which one is which because enthalpy is going to be higher than internal energy. Okay, so we are taking 291.15 minus 290, and we are dividing by 295 minus 290, and we are saying that that is equal to the enthalpy that we are trying to determine, which I'm going to call x for now, minus 290.16, and then we are dividing by 295.17 minus 290.16. And I'm solving this equation for x, so I am going to add solve out front so my T89 can keep track. And we get a, an enthalpy at state 1 of 291.312. And then I want the reduced pressure, so we're going to be taking this same relationship and plugging in our values for reduced pressure instead of enthalpy. So if I pop back over, get rid of the S, reduced pressure is going to be our first column in that second section. So that's 130.68, 130.68, minus 1.2311. So 1.2311 goes here, 1.2311 divided by 1.3068 minus 1.2311. And we get a reduced pressure of 1.24851. 1 1.24851. And then the process from one to two uses our isentropic ideal gas equation, which for the non-cold air standard analysis is RP1 over RP2, which I could write as RP2 over RP1, is equal to P2 over P1. And here, let's switch that so that makes sense. 2, 1, there we go. RP2 over RP1 is equal to P2 over P1, and that is equal to 4 for this problem. Therefore, RP2 is going to equal RP1 multiplied by 4. So I'm going to take 1.24851 multiplied by 4, and I get 4.99404. Then from that RP, I can look up an enthalpy. So I am going to find 4.994, which I see occurs between a temperature of 430 and a temperature of 440. So start a new interpolation process. And I am going to say solve out front. I'm going to take 4.99404. 
minus 4.915, and I am going to divide that by 5.332 minus 4.915, and I'm saying that that is equal to the thing that we're looking for minus 431.43 divided by 441.61 minus 431.43, and I'm solving that for x, and I am getting out as a result 433.36. Note, I could interpolate for temperature, but since I don't actually need temperature, I'm going to skip that because I am just doing whatever is necessary to get to a thermal efficiency. So our enthalpy at state 2 is 433.36. Then our state points 3 and 4 are assumed to be the same as 1 and 2 for the same reasons as in the cold air standard variation of this problem. We are assuming that the compressors are splitting the work evenly, so we need the same delta H, and we are using the same pressure ratio proportion of 4 to describe the difference in our RP values. So I'm assuming it goes back down to our initial temperature, and therefore the same RP and H. And then state 4 is going to have the same properties as state 2 because it's the same pressure ratio. And with that, we are 4 out of 10 state points through the problem. From 4 to 5, we have the same increase in temperature that we did earlier. We are increasing by 20 degrees Celsius. So I need to interpolate for a temperature at 433.36. And for that, I will jump back into my tables. And I am going to be interpolating for a temperature. So you remember earlier when I said... I could interpolate for a temperature, but I don't actually need it. Ha ha ha. I know things. I'm John. Uh, I was incorrect. Turns out that I do actually need it. Can't just add 20 to the enthalpy because it isn't necessarily corresponding to an enthalpy change of 20. I could assume constant specific heats and then figure out the enthalpy change corresponding to a temperature change of 20 Kelvin, but then I would be defeating the whole purpose of working this problem without that assumption. Anyway, I had... 431 as a temperature at state 4, or rather as a temperature at state 2, and it's the same at 4. So it's also the temperature at state 4, that's 431.895 plus 20 is 451.895, not to be confused with 450.895. That would be a very reasonable mistake. So I am going to find that on the table, and wouldn't you know it, it's split across the two columns. That's annoying. Well, I can interpolate for an enthalpy. And we will see if we need an RP. So that enthalpy is going to lie. Okay, here, let's start with temperature at 440 and 450. So I am taking solve first and then 431 point, excuse me, 451.895 minus 450 divided by 460 minus 450. Hey, I was wrong. It's not split across columns. Huh. Why didn't I think it was? It is equal to... Because it's, uh, it's a temperature, not an enthalpy. I thought it was an enthalpy because I'm stuck in enthalpy mode. It is equal to the actual enthalpy that I want here, which is going to be x minus 451.8 divided by 462.02 minus 451.8. And I get an x value of... 453.737. So note, couldn't have added 20 because it's different. And if I assume that the specific heat capacity value was 1.005, I would have determined a change in enthalpy of 20.1, which when added to 433.36 does not get the correct value of enthalpy. Therefore, I am determining a theoretically more accurate result without that assumption. Next on to state 6. For state 6, I recognize that I was given a QN. I know the difference in enthalpy between 5 and 6, then, is going to be 300. So I can add 300 to this number, and I get 753.46. Seven hundred fifty-three point seven three seven. Don't just add three hundred 
to the quantity that you had calculated to demonstrate that it was different, John. 433.737. So 453.737 plus 300 is 753.737. Look, we calculated it, we wrote it down, now we can proceed. The analysis from 6 to 7 is going to use the pressure ratio across the turbine, which is 1 over 4, which means the proportion of RP is also going to be 1 over 4, which means I need to look up the RP corresponding to an enthalpy of 753.737. So jumping back into our tables and perusing through our enthalpy column, I see that 753 is going to occur between 745 and 756. So I'm going to set up my scroll down for some reason protocol. And also set up my solve on my calculator. It's going to be 753.737 minus 745.62 divided by 756.44 minus 745.62. And that's equal to x minus 33.72 divided by 35.5 minus 33.72. And I'm solving for x. Should be a comma. What are you doing to me, calculator? And I get an RP value of 35.055. So 35.055. Okay, and then I know RP2, which in this case is going to be 7, over RP6 is equal to P7 over P6. I guess, why am I writing this? This is an RP. This is PR. Excuse me. Hope that isn't been confusing. PR7 over PR6 is equal to P7 over P6. And I am saying that that is 1 over 4, which is an assumption that we're making. So 35.0553 divided by 4 is 8.76383. 8.76383. And then I am going to look up an enthalpy corresponding to that reduced pressure. Jumping back into my tables, I see that that reduced pressure is going to occur... between 8.411 and 9.031. So I am going to interpolate. I am taking 8.76383 minus 8.411 divided by 9.031 minus 8.411. And I'm saying that that is equal to x minus the enthalpy value corresponding to 8.411. That was 503.02. And I'm dividing by the enthalpy value at 9.031 which was 513.32 minus 503.02. Solving for x yields 508.882. And then I have the same 300 kilojoules per kilogram of heat addition in the second combustion chamber which means that I'm going to be taking 508.882, I'm going to add 300 to it, that will give me the enthalpy at state 8, which is 808.882. And I need to look up an, a reduced pressure corresponding to that value. And away we go. 803, excuse me, 808, let me be on the second page. And I see 808 occurs between 800 and 810.99. So that interpolation will go. 808.82 minus 800.03 divided by 810.99 minus 800.03. And that's equal to x minus 43.35 divided by 45.55 minus 43.35. And I get a reduced pressure of 45.1269. 45.1269. And I am dividing that number by 4 for the same reasons as the process from 6 to 7. So 45.1269 divided by 4. 
yields 11.28. 11.2817. And I can determine the enthalpy value from that by jumping over into our tables, find 11.28, which is going to be on the previous page. 11.28 is going to occur between 11.1 .1 and 11.86. This should be the last interpolation I need to do. So I am going to take 11.2817 minus 11.1 .1 divided by 11.86 minus 11.1 .1, and that is equal to 554.74 minus 5, excuse me, x minus 544.35 because that was 11.1, .1, right? Yep. Divided by 554.74 minus 544.35 and solving for x yields. 546.834. 546.834. Why am I repeating it? I don't need to remember it. It's on my calculator. That is 546.834. Cool. So we could determine the temperature corresponding to that enthalpy and then subtract 20 from it. But I could also recognize that all of the heat leaving the hot side of the regenerator is going into the cold side of the regenerator, which means Q regen is the same from both perspectives. And because the mass flow rate is the same, that means the delta H value is going to be the same. So I can find H10 by figuring out the difference in enthalpy between 4 and 5, and then subtracting that from 9. So I'm going to take 453.737, I'm going to subtract 433.36, and I'm going to add that to, or rather, that delta T, 20.377, and I'm going to take 546.834 and subtract that number and I should get 526.457. And now that I have all of my enthalpies, I can calculate our work and heat transfer. So just like last time, the work in is occurring between one and two and three and four, so that's H2 minus H1 plus H4 minus H3. The Q in is occurring between five and six and seven and eight. That'd be H6 minus H5 plus H8 minus H7, and that should be 600. Unless I made a mistake. Workout is going to occur between 6 and 7 and 8 and 9. So H6 minus H7 plus H8 minus H9. And Q out is going to occur between 2 and 3 and 10 and 1. And I have all those enthalpies now. So I am going to take 433.36 minus 291.312. And I'm going to add to that 433.36. Excuse me. 36 minus 291.312. I'm going to get 284.096. Okay, work in, check. Then Q in, I am going to take 6 minus 5, 753.737 minus 5, which is 453.737. I'm going to add to that 808.882 minus 508.882, and I should get a missing parenthesis. How? Where was their parenthesis? And I should get 600. Look, I did. Hooray. Then 6 minus 7 would be 753.737 minus 508.882 plus 8 minus 9, 808.882 minus 546.834. I get a workout of 506.903. I'll do QL while I'm here. That would be 2 minus 3, which is 433.36 minus 291.312 plus 526.457 minus. 291.312. So those two quantities are 506.903 kilojoules per kilogram and 377.193. 
And then from that, I can determine a network out. That network out is going to be 506.903 minus 284.096. And I get a network out of 222.807. And I'm going to calculate a net Q in, which is going to be 600 minus 377. And I get a net heat transfer in of 222.807. And then a thermal efficiency was going to be that network that we just determined divided by our Q in, which was 600, which I'm going to scroll up for for some reason, and I get 0 0.3713. And that is how we would solve the problem without the assumption of the cold air standard. So it's not that much more difficult conceptually. The most difficult part is keeping track of what you need to look up in order to get to the next state point.